program. What you talking about? The program. The program. Get with the program. Everybody clap to this. Say what? Get with the program. It starts now. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Get With The Program Radio Show. I'm your host, Gary Jones. Now, Get With The Program Radio Show is a multicultural, informative, relevant, and entertaining one-hour weekly show offering you a combination of diverse interviews with questions and comments. And as always, we will act as a positive source of information. Now, listen, if you want to be a guest on this show, all you have to do is log into www.getwiththeprogram.biz. Shoot me an email, leave me a message. You never know. You may have a conversation that we would love to talk about. Or give me a call at 919-255-2757. Again, 919-255-2757. Now listen, today we're going to be joined in a conversation with Dr. Kimberly McTerran. And she is a wonderful person. And listen, Kimberly is the president of Save Our Souls. It is a seasoned uh, advocate highly regarded for her combination of creativity, strategic judgment, and courtroom prowess. She has broad experience advocating complex cases in both federal and state courts involving criminal uh, adoption and legal guardianship. Now, Ms. Uh, Maturian has successfully advocated appeals for abuse and neglected children as well as suspended and expelled youth. Now, Ms. Maturian has also uh, represented clients serving life sentences for drugs and murder. What an impressive uh, job that she's doing. Hello, Dr. Kimberly, and welcome to Get With The Program Radio Show. Well, hello there, Gary, and thank you for having me. It is a pleasure to have you here. I I know you're busy. I've been keeping up with you. I know you're doing great things into the community, and it's just a pleasure to have you here. So uh, you're from what area now again? I am from Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh, North Carolina. Yes. Raleigh native, huh? Yes. Okay, that's good. So, <laughs> as a matter of fact, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff pertaining to Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, particularly, uh, particularly uh, anti-corruption in North Carolina. Yes. A lot of it is going on, right? Absolutely. Wonderful. And so we're going to have that conversation. Now, listen, for my listeners, we're live today, uh, live and remote in Fairville, North Carolina. And uh, we're doing a wonderful job down here. So I'm glad everybody's tuned in. But listen, we're going to get right into this, Kimberly. Now, when we talk about anti-corruption, what are we talking about? I think what we're talking about is a system that has um, revised colonialism Mm -hmm. and modernized it into a format by which it can oppress its prey. And they've done that economically, strategically, uh, spiritually, and they've also done it educationally. So it's almost like a dyslexic system for one, but a forward and progressive system for another. Mm -hmm. I see. So it's actually... Is this by design? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay, well, who would you say designed this? (laughs) Well, again, we're dealing with a white supremacist system, and because it is a white uh, supremacist system, or white inferior, I say white inferior because anybody who has to keep its prey down is in fear of its prey. So we are in a battle with uh, other citizens in, in the United States of America, but they've set themselves self up as civil servants when they're actually the enemy mm-hmm. of who we are. Wow. So so what are some of the reasons for anti corruption? I mean, we, we, we hear that you that it's by design. Mm-hmm. So what are some of why would they want to do that? Capitalism and power. Mm-hmm. Power in itself is one of the most formidable types of revenue or the highest value is power. Mm-hmm. If you have power you can access resources, goods, and even change the perception of men. Mm -hmm. So once you have power, that is exactly how the United States was settled, with a power structure. It dominates, it uh, removes, it isolates, and it murders to obtain whatever is needed. And they leave propaganda so that others can know that they have power. Mm -hmm. So that is the reason why you see people who parade or leave flags or leave memorials is because they want to remind people to stay in fear of their system. So what I'm hearing is that these people are afraid of other cultures. They are afraid that they're going to lose the power and the strength that they have. That is correct. And be defeated. Absolutely. Okay, so would these people be the majority? No, they're not. They're actually the minority. 
But what they do is they take the other classes and break them down. They start breaking them down by language, by um, places of uh, where they live. Then they start breaking them down by classism. And even in slavery, they broke them down in colors. As far as quadro, mulattoes, um, octunes, they broke them down all the, way, all the way down to shades and tints. Hmm. So that is how precise colonialism and fear roll together is that it will break it down to its co- smallest common denominator just to have power in every level. So what I'm hearing, this has been something that has come back from years. It's been started years ago. So what would you say that are some of the primary forces today in North Carolina that's behind that? Well, I, I think most of what we see is the same. I think they uh, revolutionized it and they use integration and so integration is a tactic that says if you can't beat them, join them. And that's what integration was to us. I often tell people when teaching is that it's easier to catch gazelles when they're running together than when they are apart. Hmm. So when you have all blacks start all together, it's easy, easier to bomb a church versus if you integrate them into a church with others, it's hard to bomb all black people. So you cause fear and domestic terrorism to um, the point where you force us into integration and then you ostracize us. And that is a key element of of war tactic is to ostracize your prey. Mm -hmm. Now, I heard you mention the church. I heard you mention uh, as anti-corruption. Is that also appealing in the church right now as well? Yes, Absolutely. Um, what we know is that the church in pastime or religion was used as a tool to make the other cultures docile because there was really no um, human entity that was powerful enough to go up against those who set themselves up to be um, full of ammunition Mm -hmm. and full of power with the legal rights to do so. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that you could actually use against this prey is the threat of their human entity. And that's what, that is the fight and strategy that you saw used with Dr. Martin Luther King, where he appealed to their human side and their civil side and asked them, would you be civil and not brutish? And because that is what they displayed during the 1960s is a brutish type of behavior. Mm -hmm. And he used the strategy of humanity, simple humanity. Do you have civil obedience? Do you have restraint Hmm. as the legal force? Now with that being said, and and speaking of Dr. Martin Luther King, now we're talking a little bit about politics, we're in that arena. So anti-corruption, is it very appealing in the elections? I'm sure it is, but hearing it from you. Well, I don't think America is ready to talk about corruption across the board. I think corruption has to be revealed. And as we see today, um, no one is bringing these things out. It is fate that is bringing out the corruption. George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and even our latest instance in Washington, D.C., who is being protected and who is being patronized. Mm -hmm. So again, we are not asking to see the corruption, corruption is actually being revealed mm-hmm. in America's systems. Hmm. That, that's very interesting. Uh, Dr. Kimberly, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take a break, and okay. uh, when we come back, we're gonna talk about uh, what corruptions are you seeing in North Carolina. All right, listen, you listen to Get With The Program Radio Show, listen, don't touch that dial, we're gonna be right back after this. Hello and welcome back to Get With The Program Radio Show again. I'm your host, Gary Jones. Now today we're joining a conversation with Dr. Kimberly McTurian and we are having a wonderful conversation. And I mean, it's really going good, man. We are talking about anti-corruption in North Carolina and of course, anti-corruption, period. I mean, because it's happening in North Carolina, but it's happening in other places as well. So welcome back, doctor. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, before we took the break, we talked about anti-corruption. What are some of the reasons, the primary forces behind it, uh, even in the elections? Now, I want to ask you, in reference to North Carolina, uh, what corruptions are you seeing right now in North Carolina? I think what we're seeing is the manipulation of blacks being held as their own entity, only for the benefit of other political gain. Um, they've used minorities 
when it comes to uh, black businesses, um, even the Civil Rights Act that covers discrimination, but it never seems to cover us. Mm -hmm. It covers other people of color. It even covers women or white women. When you start seeing these various forms or identity politics, Mm -hmm. they've used the black name and the black face, but we're not benefiting from it. We are the first to be killed by police officers. Mm. We're the first to be fired. Our neighborhoods are riddled with crime and COVID-19. And again, when you start talking about minorities or discrimination, we're still at the bottom and not profiting or benefiting from our own bill. So with that being said, and that is, that is uh, true in a lot of different formats, uh, what would you say the reason uh, is behind a lot of that? Could it perhaps be some of our own fault, or is, or is it just uh, the fault of the corruption, period? Well, I, I think they've shamed us into integration thinking. We refuse to say, as blacks, we need our own separation card. We need to be protected like none other. And I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. Most of the times when we start talking about the protection of black lives or black lives matter, the first thing you hear is, no, all lives matter Mm -hmm. or all people of color matter. But really what you find out is that places, cities like Mooresville, North Carolina, Mm -hmm. they have a strong Indian population. They would be considered people of color, Mm -hmm. but they're not treated the same as blacks or other people of color. Mm -hmm. So, again, when you're talking about um, the specifics of how blacks are treated from other people of color we're still discriminated against beyond the people of color Mm -hmm. we need our own separation from how we're protected beyond all other people of color Mm -hmm. why because uh, our muhammad brothers or our arabic brothers are able to get loans they're able to get uh, corner stores they're able to get car lots and still us under the same banner as people of color can't get the same loans, Mm -hmm. can't get the same access. So then again, we have to be more specific when we talk about what access do black people need. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing, uh, uh, Dr. Kimberly, we need more control. We need our own businesses. We need our own tactics. We need to come together and work together. So that's what we're missing. Now, is that also by design or are we just programmed that way? No, um, I think it's both. I think is that we're designed Uh, is by design and we're also shamed from asking for our individual rights Mm -hmm. and that is why this argument about should we ask for reparations should we not they've given us this or they've given us that but whether you give that or not what you owe us if you don't owe us anything is reparations and isolation so that we do not be undermined by the system Mm -hmm. now with that being said uh what are the myths that affect our community our communities the most um as a paralegal what i found is that most african americans believe that the police department is supposed to protect us um, that could not be furthest from the truth the truth of the matter is the police department is not here to protect lives they're here to protect the law that is why they're called law enforcement mm-hmm. they could only protect what laws are on the books Mm -hmm. The only issue that we have is that we don't put laws on the books. Hmm. We don't create the law because we're too busy learning how to run from the law or avoiding the law or paying the law. But we do not create. And creativity is one of the things that we lack because we're not creating the world around us. So we can't put laws to govern the place that we create. Mm. We're in someone else's world, so they create the laws for them. Right. I, I hear you. So what we're talking about uh, uh, pretty much is political bribery in some instances because it's money driven behind this. Absolutely. It's all driven behind capitalism. Money, people are put in place. So what I'm hearing basically, we need more uh, elected officials that are going to do the right thing and be held accountable. Absolutely. And we need visionaries. Mm-hmm. We need to create a world for ourselves And then from that is how we create the laws that protect that vision. If you don't have a vision, what do you have to protect? Mm -hmm. If you don't have anything, then how can you protect anything? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's good information. Uh, What would you like to see uh, a change immediately or what can be done now? One word, Gary. Mm -hmm. Formation. Okay. Formation. Formation. 
I remember when I was younger, the elders in my family who did not go to school paid for the education of the younger. When the younger was sent to college, then they built careers that would allow them to reach back and take care of the elder. We have no formation in our communities. Everyone is scattered, they go to school, but they do not come back and aid the community. You can come back to black communities and though we have black colleges, we're ha we have access to criminal justice, we have access to all these other things. However, those black institutions do not disperse or deploy that education back into our communities for the benefit of our community. They just take the goods and they run. And so formation says that you are executed back into your community for a specific goal. We don't have healthy grocery stores, but we have black people in medicine. <laughs> wow. With, with that being said, in, in reference to a leadership, because we know a lot of our leaders have, have fallen off there. Uh, you know, at once upon a time, we had Martin, we had Malcolm, we have a lot of people. We, we have uh, Brother Farrah, uh, uh, Minister Farrakhan. We got leadership out here. But what's going to happen? Where do you see uh, this thing going when these leaders are no longer here? Are we prepared? What do you, what do you think? Well, I think the way that this thing is unfolding, I don't think we have a choice. I think fate is pushing us to the, in the wind that we need to be. Um, we don't have protections. We saw that on Wednesday. There is no such thing as a protection. There, all of that is an illusion. And I think the best thing you can have in chaos is new creativity to be birthed. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking for um, the horizon of new uh, innovative thinking that will come from this place of a level playing field. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to continue to get level until we come back with something that is more profound than who we were during the time of the Egyptians and we built the pyramids. Wonderful. Now, we're going to take another break, but I want to ask you this real quick. How important is it to use our history? I mean, because I hear some people all the time say things. I hear this all the time. I get even emails about this. Why is it that I'm always talking about the past? How important is knowing our past history? Gary, that is the most profound question I've ever heard. Why is it so important for us to understand our history? It is vital that we understand our history because that takes us into our future. And with our history, you know who you are and who you've become to create what you need to make today. Wow. No better way to answer that. Wonderful. Dr. Kimberly, we're going to take another break. And uh, we come back, we have more questions that we're going to jump right into. And once again, we are talking about anti-corruption. Pretty much, uh, we're talking about it all over, sounds like it. But basically, we're going to target more on North Carolina. Listen, don't touch the dial. We're going to be right back. Right now, I want to reach out to my good friend, comedian Grave Digger, Ursula Camille, and Steve Rao. Listen, don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after this. Now, I want to reach out to my good friend, comedian Grave Digger. Grave Digger, man, what are you dealing with right right now what you dealing with you always dealing with something what's the deal great what's the deal why is it that people are afraid to tear the tag off a pillar they bought in the store and they got it at their house just because they do not remove why is that ain't nobody coming to your house going in your bedroom and check and see if the tag is on your pillow and if it ain't they gonna arrest you why is it why are people just that dumb to, to follow those rules you tell me get yeah. Somebody out there tell me, why is it that Christians get mad at you when they ask you a question and you about incest and you tell them where incest started and then they go and get up and walk out? You know how incest started. It's Adam and Eve and then they chill. Them. Now, how you think you got here and now you want to call it incest? Oh, yeah. A lot of them get upset about that. And Gary, before I get out of here, why is it you can never find a Jehovah Witness pastor? You, now, you think about that. Why is it? Later. Okay, now I want to reach out to Steve Rao. Steve Rao, what's going on in your world? Well, Gary, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, it's a very, very disruptive time in American democracy. As Donald Trump on Wednesday was impeached for the second time in the United States, uh, the second first president of the United States be impeached twice. He was impeached for inciting insurrection against the U.S. Capitol. Ten Republicans joining. Now the next step, whether he'll be moving to the U.S. Senate, where he'll be put on trial 
trial and possibly removed from office. But Senator McConnell says that they will not do this before January 19th. Meanwhile, on Tuesday, on next week, January 20th, Joseph R. Biden will be sworn in as the 46th president of the United States. He will be taking on America's reins of power as our commander in chief, facing a global pandemic, complete disruption in democracy, racial turmoil, and broken foreign policies all around the world. We just have to hope that when he takes the oath of office, he will understand those most important words in order to form a more perfect union. The American Republic will get through this, but it certainly is rocky times in the oldest democracy in the world. More to come next week, Gary. All right, Steve. Well, thank you so much, Steve. Look forward to hearing from you next week. And uh, we're going to see where this thing goes, Steve. All right. We'll talk to you later. Hello and welcome back to Get With The Program Radio Show again. I'm your host, Gary Jones. Now, today we are joining conversation with Dr. Kimberly Mertarian, and we are having a wonderful conversation. And uh, we're talking about anti-corruption uh, in North Carolina, pretty much around the, the country, because a lot of what's happening in North Carolina is happening to other cities as well. And make no mistake, it is going on. Once again, welcome back to the show, Dr. Kim. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, we touched on a lot of things. We talked about anti-corruption, the reason behind primary forces. Uh, uh, we even talked about the politics side of it. And uh, we still got a lot more to go. But what I want to ask you now, I know you're busy. And you, you for based on your bio now, to my listeners, uh, I gave you the short version of her bio. She has some more extensive stuff here. Uh, it is incredible. Uh, we're going to talk. Matter of fact, before we go into how can people get in contact with you? Well, of course, they can reach me directly at 919-349-7622. Mm-hmm. Again, that's 919-349-7622. Of course, I'm in the Capitol. And you can also email me at Save Our Sons US at yahoo.com. And we're on Facebook at Save Our Raleigh. So you can reach me. We, we, we will be listening for you and we hope to hear from you soon. Now, uh, real briefly, Save Our Sons. Now, that organization primary focus is? Um, well, we be- believe it or not, we actually started out with African American males because that was our target audience. But of course, once we found how capitalism killed everybody, we expanded our borders to so many more. And so that is our aim. Yes, African American males. But then we found that the families were affected by this. Um, even how economically, when you have one parent in the home, it's very hard to start o- home ownership. It, it was just so many different avenues. So we began to start ministering to uh, women and the children and everyone that could have an impact in our society. Now, is this uh, a, a nonprofit? This is a free organization. It's free for the people. Yes, it's a nonprofit organization. Our donation uh, donors give us um, funds here and there, and we we welcome those funders. However, those that we service do not have to pay. Wonderful. That's great stuff for the community. Now, what are you working on right now? I know you're working on something. I know we mentioned that earlier. What are you working on? Um, Right now, Save Our Sons is starting our project and our campaign called North Carolina Anti-Corruption Campaign. It addresses the deep interwoven um, practices within our systems from drugs um, to who's actually getting paid for those drugs and where that money is funneled to is it coming back to our community or does it just continue to pay for new tires and new guns for officers we are taking a look at the budget we're looking at um, everything from the legalization of marijuana in our state Um, anti-corruption covers quite a few things and how investigations are done so yes North Carolina anti-corruption. Hmm. So with that being said, I heard you mention marijuana. So that's a good, that's a really big thing going on now. What do you think about uh, the decriminalization of marijuana? Okay, great. Well, Gary, let me say, North Carolina has been slow putting their foot to the fire when it comes to uh, decriminalizing or legalizing. And let me just make sure that the audience is clear. Decriminalization does not do away with marijuana convictions. It only says they'll charge you for a small or minimal amount. The problem that we're finding is that marijuana has been used as a weapon in the black community. So what what happens is our young people are targeted when they are pulled over by officers through traffic stops. And then marijuana smell is used to enter, or we call it Emmett Till, enter without cause um, their premise so that they can desecrate their lives and shut them down. And whether they find anything or not, 
again many of our young men in raleigh we have just had a case where two young men were taken into a room by officers because they smelt marijuana and they were strip searched naked and um, a full body cavity search and kicked out on the streets of capitol boulevard they were from wilson north carolina so they didn't know where they were and their car was down the street when they got back to wilson one of the young men actually sued the city wow so even when we, if we go back some years back when um, when they had uh, started building the prison systems, prisons were being built all over the country. And you're absolutely right. Uh, drugs are part of a plan uh, to make money inside of the prison system. This whole thing is capitalism. Yes. So where do you see that going? Do you think we're ever going to get a handle on this? I mean, because we know the drugs in the community. Have we woke up yet or this is still happening? Oh, very much so. And, I, and that's one of the things that we're doing. That's uh, what we spoke about was North Carolina corruption. But Save Our Sons is also doing a lifeless project whereby those that are in the federal institution for selling drugs, um, they have received life sentences. And we are targeting, we currently have about a thousand young black males with the exception, exception of about 10 white males who have life sentences for drugs and they are still incarcerated to this day. We have to begin to talk about decriminalization of all drugs. So we need, um, well now, we, of course, we have um, some new elected officials in office now, and we certainly hope they, they be held accountable. So when it comes to anti-corruption, who should, be, who should we hold accountable for this? Should we pretty much hold our, ourselves or should we hold the elected officials or the police officers or is this a whole body that needs to work together and be held accountable? I think we have to look at where the profits are going. The profits are going back into a circle, back into the slave plantation hands. And before they were surplanters, but now it's the state. The state is now the new master. And his puppets are those that he employ to hold, hold the money as trust. So your judges are getting paid. Your attorneys are taking um, drug money from drug dealers unaccounted for, especially in the federal system. You're looking at attorneys that are taking drug money. You're talking about um, those who work as nurses and doctors inside of the prison system. This plan for plantation life is now legalized from a new point of view, is just now through warfare of not of depriving a certain population of its resources. Um, that is the first attack on our people is that you isolated us from our from resources and repair. Mm -hmm. And that's what reparations is. Resources and repair. Mm -hmm. And when you isolate that and you substitute it with substance abuse, that is what you create. Once you deprive, then you can put whatever it is to eat from. And that's what drugs is. It mm. is a substitute of you not repairing and providing resources. Hmm. Interesting. It's almost like when you're hungry, you eat what's there. Absolutely. Right. If you don't give me employment, and if that employment does not meet the need of the daily lifestyle, then, of course, I'm going to take the easier route out. And if you only give me something to be proud of only one month a year, but the rest of the year you make me celebrate European life, mm -hmm. then of course you create a deficit spiritually, naturally, in every way possible. My goodness, thank you so much. Now, we're going to take another break, but uh, I heard a word in the conversation, uh, reparations, and uh, I do want to come back and touch on that a little bit because I'm definitely uh, uh, moving forward with that. I definitely believe reparations need to be served properly because we have not received, the African-American community has not received reparations. Now, I also want to come back, I want to also talk about the impact uh, a direct impact of anti-corruption in the African-American community right now because we know there's some more impacts and we did touch them but look what we're going to do we're going to take a break and we come back we're going to have more conversation here with Dr. Kimberly McTurian and don't touch that dial you listen to Get With The Program Radio Show we'll be right back after this hey look right now man we're going to get on deck with Ursta Camille Ursta Camille what's the topic for today? Good day Gary today's topic sometimes it's all an act World Book Dictionary says that act is to behave, to perform, play a part, to pretend. In order to identify one as pretending, we must be able to discern, which means to recognize or perceive, 
clearly and to perceive differences. King David was deceived by a wise woman acting as a widow. The words she spoke were of Joab. Now Joab came up with this plan to have the woman act as a widow and tell King David this story so he would be moved to pardon his own son Absalom who had killed his brother for the crime against his sister. David discerned Joab was behind all the woman was saying. Just like King David, sometimes we may find ourselves faced with people who look the part, sound the part, as they come with a great story that covers the hidden plan of another. We must discern to know the difference between what is genuine and what is all an act. Hello and welcome back to Get With The Program Radio Show again. I am your host today. We're joining conversation with Dr. Kimberly Maturian and uh, she is the president of Save Our Souls Incorporated. It is a seasoned advocate, highly regarded for her combination of creativity, strategic judgment and courtroom uh, prowess. Yes. And uh, she has broad experience advocating complex cases in federal and state courts involving criminal uh, adoption and legal guardianship. Now, Ms. Maturian has successfully advocated appeals for abuse and neglected children as well as suspended and expelled youth. Uh, Ms. Materian also represents clients serving life sentences and drugs for murder. What an extensive bio you have there. You uh, got your hands on a lot of stuff. Now listen, we talked about a lot of things, but we touched on reparations right before we took the break. Reparations, what is your take on that? I think my take on reparations is exactly what it says, to repair. To repair, to repay, and to regard. And I think that is what we need from the United States of America in order for their souls to be alleviated. And, and the question is, is America ready to face the atrocities that they've done to the African American culture? Again, reparations is more than money. It is the ability to stop yourself from having power to oppress your brother. Mm -hmm. And one of the issues is the reason why reparations has been so controversial is because capitalism is what drives rep um, the injustices that we see. Mm -hmm. Once you remove capitalism, you can again start talking strategically about how you can help your brother rather, rather than sabotage or extort your brother. And that's what capitalism allows you to do. Mm -hmm. It allows you to exploit your brother legally. Mm -hmm. Now, I had uh, several guests on my show before and we talked about reparations. Mm -hmm. um, in reference to, because I hear a lot of people say money. They're talking about the dollar signs. We need money. We need money. And I do agree we do need money, too. We that need to be part of the plan. Right. What, what, what would be a number that you would think that, uh, that we would uh, want to be uh, repaired for? What would be a number? Gary, I've, I've tried my best to think about a number for our people. And honestly, I cannot. What I would like to see more importantly is the tactics that have been used against us. For instance... We all know that because not only were we robbed financially, but psychologically, we have suffered. There is no amount of money that can repair what psychologically we've done. We've seen this displayed in our music, from our lifestyle, from our eating habits, while we are now first in line for COVID-19 and all of the infant mortality there are so many venues that injustice have hit us in America that there is no dollar amount that I think could pay for that. Mm -hmm. What we would have to say is that we are protected, um, which is more costly, just as costly as money. Mm -hmm. Can we be the first to get health care? Are we the first to get education with no cost? I think the same way that they were able to live for 400 years for free, so should we. Mm -hmm. If they didn't have to pay for education, neither should we. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have, and not just education, but what do we declare as education? See, we had to live 400 years under their educational system with their ideologies. What would we say the new education is? So those are some really strong factors and things that we have to start discussing because the platform is now. 
Wow, good information. I also want to mention uh, uh, Dr. Uh, McTarian holds a doctor degree in uh, uh, biblical counseling and theology from Justice Fellowship International, a yes. master's degree in public administration from Strayer, and a bachelor's of applied science from Campbell University. Now, Ms. McTarian is known for her watchdog approach as it relates to ensuring the integrity of the law. Yes. We need that eye. Yes. We need that eye. Now, a lot of things you mentioned that we have been that we have been robbed of and brainwashed, and and we did touch a little bit on this about the church. Where do you see the church? Are you do you think the church, uh, the black church, is doing enough uh, to help us uh, uh, be uh, driven away from anti-corruption? I think the Bible judges the church, and what he did say if I had to stand on the premise of my theology degree, it says that judgment starts at the house of God first. And if we had to determine where we are in America by how the church have handled our livelihoods, then I would say they have failed us. The black church has not been accountable to its citizens the community, and even to law enforcement and making sure that the laws that are made benefits everyone across the board versus a few. They have neglected their responsibility and passed on that responsibility to law enforcement versus taking ownership of the black males in our community, the economics of our community. They have taken the wealth and stolen the wealth from our community and dispersed it into suburban areas where their houses cost two and three million dollars. And they've told the people that if they can do that with God, then they are too successful. And they've created this, um, they've given their responsibility as well to the foster care system, the D Department of Health and Human Services. And I will go back even to say, when they talk about no room at the end for Jesus, there was no room, they said, for Jesus at the end. But now pastors have plenty of room in their mansions, yet they have no foster care children in their homes. Wow. Uh, that is uh, very good information and it, it is uh it's true in a lot of cases because i even see that myself uh, you are absolutely dead on that now in reference to police protection because that's another area that's another uh heavy area even right now as we saw uh the incidents is happening in the, in the capital you did touch on that a bit early in the program uh in, in reference to police protection in north carolina how does anti-corruption uh play a part in that well, again, I think what you said, Gary, we're talking about what is versus what is perceived. And what I mean by perception is that we want to believe that the current police system is here to protect us. But in actuality, actuality the police system was never designed to protect us. It was only designed to manage us. So you have managed property, and we are still looked upon as property. So basically, they're doing property management all over again. They're not protecting property because we don't have any value. The only reason why they had to protect us before, to some degree, is because we were valuable on the, on the field. Mm -hmm. But we don't even, they don't even call us to work for them. So why would they protect us? Mm. Wow. So we have about a couple of more, a couple of more minutes here. Once again, to my listeners, today we are live on location. We're in Fairville, North Carolina, and we're having a wonderful conversation here. Now, uh, I want to ask you this, Dr. Kimberly. With anti-corruption, where do we draw the line? I think we draw the line with the perception of where we are in America. The dream versus the reality. And again, until we as African Americans to, can take a pill to say, and maybe it's the red pill or the blue pill, but it's the reality pill that says this country was never supposed to be ours. And, and there is no way to assimilate ever that will cause them to love, accept, and respect us. That is something we have to do within. And even if that means coming out of a system that treats us in this manner, we must be willing to do that. Mm -hmm. To detach ourselves from the lie 
it's one of the most painful things that African Americans will have to do. Mm -hmm. Now, real briefly here, we, we've, we've seen the corruption on Capitol Hill in, in Washington, D.C., how uh, those people stormed the Capitol and it took the police officers forever to get there and it was even taken over. Had that shoe been on the other foot, had that been uh, Black Lives Matter, we or have been all black people rushing up in, how far do you think we would have gotten? We wouldn't have got. <laughs> <laughs> Not how far, we just wouldn't have got, okay? I, and I think that's obvious to, you know, the blind man in the room. <laughs> I, I knew the answer to that question. I just wanted to ask it because I know my listeners, I bet they're saying, we wouldn't have got nowhere. We wouldn't have got nowhere. Yep. Exactly. And wow. that, that's our reality. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the, the transpired events throughout this entire 2020 all the way up to now tells us our, re our painful reality. It is the painful truth of what blacks have been saying for numerous of years and mm -hmm. decades and generations. And now it is before the people. Now, what are we going to do with this opportunity is the question. Wow. Good information. Dr. Kimberly McTurian, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you. You know, I always like to ask my listeners and my, and my guests any last minute statements you'd like to say about anti-corruption. What I would encourage our people to do is to stay awake, be conscious, and don't fear truth. It will set you free. Wonderful. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Kimberly. Uh, as I say, you listen to Get With The Program Radio Show. I'm your host, Gary Jones. And as I always say, stay positive, keep your head up, and remember to... Get With The Program. What you talking about? The Program. The Program. Get With The Program. Everybody clap to this. It starts now. Yeah. Yeah.